Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. We haven't restarted yet, because I don't think we need to yet. We have two skill points we can do. I'm keeping those in reserve until we get a check we can't do yet. I know we have a sub affair check we need to make. We could put both points in there. I don't want to do that if I don't have to. We have some more quests we can do. We have a lot of quests to do right now. We did the money thing, thank goodness. We need to find 20 real to pay for your room at the Whirling. Okay. So we still need to do this. We have an end of day brief at 2100 as well. Um, all right. Let's go over here and talk to this nice person. A thin man is smoking below and exhausted, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be Whirling's cook. As he steps in, he nods towards the table and says something completely foreign language. The only words he can make out are Gorsi and Quebec. It must be his name, Gorsi. Gorsi Quebec. Sounds representative. Um, hello, sir. Got time for a few questions? The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. Um, you've got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. Okay. I got nothing. Aroma spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. I sure hope so. It's a kitchen. Dishes are drying. The smell of chemicals and pine trees. We can go through the door. Let's put a tab and see if we need anything else in here. Right, let's see what's in the door. Maybe it's just outside. Might just leave it out the back. Heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. I wonder where the store leads. Yes, say it out loud. You do? Lieutenant regards you with patient skepticism. It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Well, it's part of the whirling in rags. So there's something about this place that makes me want to know. Eccentric, but okay. I suppose we could look into it as a side investigation. He's not bothered by your eccentricity. He seems genuinely intrigued himself. Um, alright. Yes, a mini side investigation. He looks at you, then look at the door. Garte is the person to ask you about this. Cafeteria management. All right. Um, push on the door. Door does not budge. Touch the door. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel is door flush with frame on every side. All right. So Gart would be this guy here. We can ask him about this. Can I help you? Um. Yes. There's another thing at the whirling. There's a mysterious blue steel door in the back of the kitchen. Oh, yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. He shrugs. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just a frente warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He runs his finger across the counter to check for dirt. He's attempting to maintain an air of, air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little, he shrugs. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Okay. Hmm. We do have a crowbar. Let's see if the door turns blue when I wield the crowbar. It is... No, it's still green, so probably not. Though the other... The trash compactor was white. And then it turned blue. Let's see if this does anything. No. Alright, so holding the crowbar did nothing for me. With a shot. I don't think the chain cutters or the flashlight are going to help me either. either. Alright, well, so much for that noise. I don't see any bottles around. Nothing is highlighted, so nothing there. I suppose we can talk to these people. Like, we haven't talked to that guy. Um, we have not. We have other things to do. Let's try the subway fair jump, I guess. So what else are we going to do? We also try the cocaine, but that seems like a really bad idea. Other options. Oh, we should talk to the lorry driver about the corruption, right? That seems like something we could do. Hey, dude. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? Okay. Apparently we can't do anything about this. What are you hauling? High-grade narcotics. What are you actually hauling? 
Got another haul of fallen cargo, mostly sporting goods. Okay. Nothing illegal then? Unless illegal sports equipment, and that's it. So not this guy. He is totally unhelpful. So there must be another driver somewhere we're supposed to talk to? If there is, I have no idea. He's the only driver we really know of. I'm surprised we can't talk to him about it. The other option would be the woman, but she doesn't really seem to know anything either. There's nothing over here we can do. I thought we were supposed to talk to the driver. He seemed like a logical choice. The woman is just muttering and probably has dementia, so that doesn't help us at all. I guess there's this guy here. Can't talk to him. We can't go here, though. Okay, Grad Factor of Manics Miracles U49. A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy rod main machine is well kept for such an old machine. All right, look in the window. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a Gorman's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. Okay, what kind? The driver has adorned the space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. All right, what about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small purse to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. Racist nationalist paraphernalia grits his teeth. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. Lieutenant lauds towards the racist lorry driver. Hey, this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely, yes. The guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. Okay. Don't see how that helps us, though. And we know now it is his, but that doesn't exactly help us with anything. Can we talk to this guy again? I'm not sure that helps us either. I think we just need to go and... Yeah. We only have five real. We're not going to be able to... Sleep with the whirling gig today, I think. I mean, maybe, but it's not likely. Okay, so we're gonna run back over here and see if we can. We'll put a point in Sebo Fair and see if we can do anything. I'd love to be able to get this guy down, but I don't think there's a real opportunity for that. Okay, so go through here. It's kind of said we have to go through a loading screen to just go upstairs in the same screen, but that's where we are right now. Um, there's this way. There we go. Okay. We just need to increase the relevant skill. The relevant chill skill we know is sub affair. Assuming I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, so we need to get up here. Jog as much as you possibly can, as much as you feel safe doing. I wouldn't feel safe jogging anywhere on here. There's definitely a crap shoot here, but otherwise. Okay, so we need sub affair to do this. If we fail again, we die which would be pretty funny. Um, so I guess we should save. We should probably save. Okay, new save done. Let's put a point in sub affair, which is, I keep forgetting where this thing is. There it is, we have zero points in it. There, we put a single point in. I don't want to do that again. And if we die, to be fair, we won't have an opportunity. All right. Okay, still low. We have a better chance. Fuck, we're dead. You wanna watch us die? Because this is how we die. We're gonna fall over and break our neck, do you think? Um, that was a really good roll, too. Not a gymnast, you're a boxer. Okay, can't do that right now. Damage health minus one. Health critical. Um, we're gonna die right now, right? Yep. Okay. You feel something in your chest. Unnatural pressure. It's spread to your left arm, your jaw. Oh, shit, we're having a heart attack. I'm guessing this is bad. Very, very bad. This is the end, bad. Try to remain conscious. All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even get to see your you don't even see your face like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. That's it. We're just dead. Cops have first final heart attack. And it's actually kind of surprising that's like a front page headline. Detective Lieutenant Lyrcium passed away yesterday. His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to those who knew him. He was the heaviest drinker I'd ever met, Captain Ptolemy Price, deceased superior officer commented. That ain't easier on the ticker. He loved his liquor, sure, said Detective Chester McLean, friend and colleague. 
but I think before he had the heart attack, his heart was broken. According to an official statement, by, even by the RCM, the officer was on the brink of solving a murder case. Were we? Didn't feel like we were. Okay, so we could just load the game, and actually that seems fair. I want to put two points in it. It seems... It seems like overkill, but I don't know what else to do with those two points anyway, so fuck it. Yeah, let's do both points then. Level it up, level it up. Alright, accept changes. Let's try this. Even chances. Okay, we have a good chance for this, except no, we don't. Okay, can I just get out? No, see, I can't escape. I can't. I can't. I don't even know what we rolled. Let's see what we rolled. If we rolled like two ones, we should definitely try it again. Okay, that isn't that good, actually. Alright, I'll make the jump next time, except right now we're gonna die, so whatever. Let's load that again. I don't know if it. I don't think it saved the game before. I think it saved. Oh, we have the automatic save, but I don't think that actually kicked in. I think we have a good chance of making this work. If we roll above a four on both the die, I think we've got a good chance at this. There we go. Now it's green. That worked. Okay, you probably shouldn't have jumped. I mean, just going down, like, if you would just crouch down and, like, grab the ledge and the lower, slowly lowered yourself down, like, logically, that would have been great. Jumping is just weird. Why would you need to jump? There's no distance. Okay, as you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you and sharpening your senses. All right, continue the voyage. Closing your eyes is a really bad idea. You should definitely not do that. Concrete floor welcomes you. Realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert, people must be the adrenaline. You know you could do it, Lieutenant Ace claims. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. Okay, can I get the coat now? Yeah, let's take that. And actually, I mean, I love our current outfit, don't get me wrong, but maybe it'd be better for wear like the actual clothes we're supposed to be wearing. Plus one Espira Decor and plus one to Shivered. Okay, see, no minuses. That sounds better already. So let's wear this. Hmm. Not as big a fan, but okay. Actually, I'm tempted to remove the necktie. Uh, he has this Inland Empire. Minus one several fair. Oh, the flare cut trout. If I had taken off my pants. Hold up. Hold the fuck up. Hold the phone. Hold everything. Are you telling me? Are you telling? I'm going to do it. I'm going to take off our pants. I'm going to see if that's the thing. If we can take off our pants and only spend one skill point and then put them back on, that might be the way to do it. It's stupid and crazy and horrible and wonderful all at the same time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take off our pants. Okay. Minus one suggestion. No big deal. We don't care about that. And let Empire, we don't care about. Minus one to save our fare here, too. So take off your shoes. Take off your shoes and your pants, and you might be able to make this an even roll. We might not even need to spend any points. Oh, it's still locked. Okay, we do need to spend a point because we failed this before. Um, alright. So we spend a point in Subo Fair. Um, not right now. Let's do that again. So we'll have a better than even chance then. Yeah, better than even. Failure again. I can't believe... We just rolled really badly that time. That's okay. It should still work out. We take off our pants and shoes and we totally got this. That's hilarious. Um, right. Does not matter. We're going to load the game. Take off our pants and shoes again. And do that again. We have to put the point in again, too. It's a lot of juggling, but... It's fine. Okay, so first thing we do... Shoes off. Pants off. And this increases our several f no, no, it doesn't. Um, none of us increases our several fare. It's weird decor. Interfacing. Reaction speed. Rhetoric. No. Okay. So this doesn't help us at all. Does not matter. Okay. Put in a point in several fare. There you go. 
Not having to spend both points is probably worth it for this. I'm hoping. Oh my god, the constant failures. We're just rolling really, really poorly. Okay, no, not gonna work. You're gonna suffer a heart attack. It's okay, load the game. Really, we just can't risk the failure. The even, I mean, would it be worth it to spend two points? It seems silly to spend two points and take off the shoes and socks, or shoes and pants. I mean, that's the way we made it before. Actually, we didn't take out the shoes and pants before, but... Um, I probably don't need to leave the menu either, but that's okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. There we go. That's what we needed. Alright, let's just close your eyes, let senses take in the world around you. Ankles tingling from the tension, blood roaring in your ears, you're ready for your rendezvous with the concrete pavement below. Martinez ghost is about its daily routine as you soar through the air. The loud voices of the protesters mixed with the engine sounds of the traffic jam. Waves crash against the pier and dense salty air fills your lungs. See so on the money Breton. Just imagine yourself dual wielding a bottle and flaming cigarette while it's airborne. Don't let go of the moment yet. The corpse is dominating the yard and the stench is nauseating even so far from the epicenter. It brings tears to your eyes. We'll take care of that body too. We'll take care of all of it. Okay, then we continue the voyage and we finally land. Okay. You realize it's been a while since you felt so alive, alert, and capable. It must be the adrenaline. Okay, must have knew you could do it. There's the harbor rushes in. Let's put on our pants again. That'd be a good idea, probably. So we're gonna go ahead and put on our shoes and pants. We need better stuff right now. Stuff that doesn't have minuses, but so it goes. Definitely pick this up and take it and then wear it. Because now we don't have minuses. Okay. And now, of course, we save, because that was really good, and we saved ourselves a point, which is more to the point, probably a good idea. All right, now we can look at this from above. Look the rain, no doubt. Yep, like rainwater, okay. All right, there's stuff over here. What we got over here? At least three packs worth of cigarette butts. Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and Potent Pilsner, all right. I was empty wine bottles and cigarettes on the ground. Someone partied really hard here. Did I do this? Well, the lieutenant looks at you, then the bottles. Yes, I think we can say with relative confidence this was you. Hmm. This is really sad. I must have been miserable. Yes, the lieutenant agrees. The scene isn't exactly ripping with joy. Let's just move on. Alright, I think we could have done something with that, but okay. Can I... Okay, I can't do anything with that. Oh, looks like there's a side passage. That's how you get into the apartment building. Okay. Um, we need to go downstairs. Actually, is there anything inside here? This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name of the door reads Renault Arnaud. You need to rest. Your body's aching. Getting in here is taking something out of you. Have a seat. So this is where Renee books. I'm going to look around. If you must, the den looks around. But please hurry. We're pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean. They're sparse continents. Meticulously organized. There's a frame photograph on the table. All right. Take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young photo, young couple out in the street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a royal carbonara uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She's smiling playfully at the camera. Rene looks like he's about to smile. The photo must be tied to some good memories. Why'd you take that picture of Rene, Lieutenant asked, glancing at the photo? Um, I'm going to ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier, he marks, surprised. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure, as long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. We could rest, but that seems like a bad idea. Let's just go. Okay, let's go. I know, I know, we have a thing. It's okay. Um, How do we get down? Just clicking there doesn't work. We can't take those stairs, apparently. We've got to take these stairs over here. All right. Hello. I'll run to great machines and put assistance. Let's go explore around. We should be less easy to spot here, and hopefully no one has spotted us. White pine trees are printed on the screen covering like it's like a forest under snow. Alright, we're supposed to go talk to the very corrupt union rep, basically. Wait, what is this? Controls, you say? Controls, you say? 
A rusted control panel with several knobs, two buttons marked Illuminaire and Nitiendaire are faded with use, as it seems to have controlled the large crane above. Containers attached to a chuck block. I don't think we want to do either of those things. That seems like a really bad idea. Yeah, why would we want to do that? That seems like a very... Oh, we need to get rid of this stuff in our way. Is that what the deal is? Oh, no, that's not in our way. That's all the way up there. Okay, no, never mind. I'm just having a trouble perspective for some reason. All right, well, there's the money. Take the money. Anything else around here? Take that. Okay, more health stuff. That's good. I'll put this thing over here. Paid industrial letter on the platform. Convulsant. Okay, no idea what that means. Moving on. around. Gone. Oh, okay. The shipyard ahead is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. Well, yeah, there is a strike going on and all. Pile of cargo belts used for heavy lifting. Once is for a million. The speaker tower is silent. There is no work. Oh, no work to organize in the yard. Yeah, that makes sense. Everyone being on strike and all. Industrial side thermos. Smells like burnt coffee. Can I take it? I take the money. We are not going to get to 20 real this way. Ah, uh, there's a dude here. The banner sucks into the weight of the rain, snow, white waves on red. Container, container, he sings. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everett. The tiny man is so engaged in his work he doesn't notice you. Hello? Everett, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, master? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. It kind of makes you feel like an asshole for no apparent reason. I see you're not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? What's it with you people and scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks are just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just, some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Alright, uh, what are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am, yes, I am, so it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. He waves the containers towering above him. Alright, it's easy. Even with logic one, we know something is not right about this, but we only do it once. We have an even chance. We could also leave and save the game and come back. We'd always just load the game and come back if we failed this. An even chance, I think we have a good chance of doing this. Fuck. Snake eyes, even. Fucking snake eyes. Should we reload the game? I'm tempted to do it because of fucking snake eyes. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it. How far back do we need to go? It's all the way back. Oh, actually, that's when we landed. Uh, we'd have to take the money again as we loop all the way around. I don't know if it's worth it. I'm not saving the game as often as I should be if I'm going to be doing that. I don't know if we need that kind of technique necessarily. Keep the amazement to herself. Alright, where is everyone? The harbor's empty. Well, most of the guys are down at the gates keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ah, we haven't worked for two months now. So no one's working? Not everyone's down there, of course. He chuckles. Mr. Everett is in his office, where he always is, and Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. He pauses to think. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble, and Everett sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. He stops, but seems eager to tell you more. What kind of trouble did Titus and his friends get into? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. He smiles and leans closer. Him and the boys stirred something up in town. Probably drank too much, got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. Don't go all bad cop on this simply friendly fellow. Yeah, you're your right suggestion. what they actually do? I guess the boy got a bit too ratty and has to let off some steam. Don't really know the details. I just how boys are, you know? Another chuckle. I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hardies. He looks to you for assistance. Uh, too rowdy? Leo, what kind of fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving and words are stewing forth. Words, words, and look. Even more words. The guy could on for the end of the days. Now he's talking about some drug sawmill owner who... No, we already switched to a price fishing rod. He apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut and never do the questions. Alright. Do you work here? 
Yes, everyone needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick, but everyone calls me Leo. The little man raises his hand in a welcoming gesture. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everett is away. He chuckles. Actually, Miss Buford is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. The good-hearted chuckle again. Who is this Miss Buford? Lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with a skin like those Dow and Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done. Me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's too much to do around here, and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes, I am. Let's see on this Miss Buford topic. Maybe? Who's Miss Buford? Oh, Lizzie? She's a real sharp tool. Miss Everett put her through some fancy school and everything east of the river. Four years she was gone. When she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood and knows everybody. Gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. He goes on. If he misses and me, we should have a child. We're really happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Dr. Leometry said so, and she knows about such things. Okay, on and on and on. I um, think you're doing a real great job around here, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. The lieutenant smiles at the little man. Well, thanks a lot. Coming for you means a lot, really. He didn't think it was possible that the smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here, but you guys are all right. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot to Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo stay. All right, what's in that container over there? The one suspended that I almost fucked with. Oh, that one. He looks at the container. That should be empty, as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Okay, I'm looking for the leader of the Dockworks Union. Oh, you want Mr. Evart, then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this near neighborhood. He coughs and continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Evart and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are really good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Evart, Mr. Edgar, and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Patience. Deep down, you have the mental power to keep listening. Not many would, but you do. Alright, don't interrupt. Maybe he's actually going to tell us something. I had a rep the teacher, Miss Bellows. Leo let out a little chuckle. Her real name was Miss Bellums. She was a pretty, pretty lady, but when she got mad, he starts laughing. All the boys liked her, if you know what I mean, mister. He winks at you. We used to sneak in her yard in dark and peek through the window. One time we saw Miss Bellows with a fellow. Yes, we did. Yes, we did, mister. He looks for signs of disbelief in her eyes. Um, don't say anything. Let him continue. He can get his mouth into trouble, hopefully. He's nodding and looking at you with a smile that's too sincere to be clever. Finally, he seems to lose some internal struggle and adds, Then was naked, too. That's all I gotta say about that. Very interesting. Thank you for telling me the whole thing. Thank you. I almost forgot. Mr. Everett is not in that container over there. Leo points to his left. I got distracted telling the story, but he's in there. Okay. I'm off. We should save the game because we're going to have further checks and we're going to want to re reload, probably. Especially if we get some fucking snake eyes again. Okay, so he's in... He said the container over to his left. I guess it would be this direction. There's nothing else here, so... Okay, so we go this way. Yep, okay. Low on health, but once into endurance. Probably not going to do that, though. Um, alright, what is this? Coffee and the giant thermoses is still lukewarm. Can I grab some? Because that sounds great. No? Okay, never mind. Stare me to pallets leading up. Alright. I hear typing. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the dude typing over there. He's probably going to be surprised to see us. Um, let's look at the books here before he notices us. He looks very concentrated on his work. Taxidermy fish that tells time. Well, that's better than singing. Everett Claire. Before you was a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up on his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you got backbone. Yeah. Say nothing. Look him dead in the eye. The one good eye of this man feels you up without him flickering. The other, his lazy left eye. It's constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank. Grotesquely magnified by his plus six glasses. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It's unbearably human in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Alright, keep staring. 
At first, nothing happens. His face wears a wide and self-satisfied smile. Every now and then, he smacks his big lips. Like a general over his maps, he plots his move. Judging by the way he's looking at his chops, it's going to be a good one. So. Oh, he actually voiced it. He begins to speak, albeit very slowly, purposefully leaving a pause after his opener. Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi, how nice that you found a moment to pay a visit to the Dubarger's Union. I'm Everard Clare, head of this little operation here. Little does he know, he actually gave us information we did not have before, which was our name. So we're probably, what, Henry Dubois? Dubois? Whatever the hell he said there. Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny folding chair opposite to his giant desk. The folding chair looks like a torture device, extremely uncomfortable. You go ahead, detective. Uh, thank you? Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with the Debrow stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Um. Actually, looking down on him? I don't know. What's better, sitting in the tiny chair... Or standing before your master. I mean, either way, it seems bad. Sitting in the tiny chair seems worse somehow. Well, I'd rather stand. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner as equals. Take a seat. I insist. He's trying to throw you off your game with his Dubois nonsense. So I give him the pleasure. Um. But boo. Hmm. I mean, now it's an order, and I don't really feel like taking orders from this joker. I don't sit. It's my kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. As he nods, his multiple chins move like ocean waves. I, too, have convictions, one of which is that I will not engage any man who won't face me at high level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. He turns back to his typewriter. Damn, that's a nasty play. He's got you, a titan of volition. In a fork. I guess you just have to sit or leave. All right, take a seat. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man. And reasonable men. Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. He gives you a sly wink. Um, all right, wink back. Or try to, anyway. Some people can't wink. Like, their whole faces, face kind of contorts. It's actually kind of disturbing to see. But most people, most people can wink. So tell me, how can the head of the DeBarges Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Oh shit, are we dead? We're gonna die right now. It's gonna happen. <laughs> the chair is that uncomfortable. Um, we're about to fall over. Yep, the chair is that uncomfortable. Holy shit, I guess I should have healed myself first. Okay. Help. Yeah. Screaming isn't happening on the account of the extreme short in your breath. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let it all go. We're fucked. Okay. So we died as soon as we talked to him. That's hilarious. Let's try that again. Except without, you know, the death. I think I'm going to give myself, like, one more death. Before we just call it and restart. Though it seems like things are actually progressing now, so... I'd hate to have to do that, but okay, so we have an item. No, we have an interact. No, is that? No, that's not what I want. I want the health items. Do I need to just. Maybe all I need to do is press the button. There we go. Gave myself a health item. Alright, let's go through that conversation again, unfortunately. One more health shouldn't be too bad. It could be the chair is so bad it's going to take health from us every time. That'd be kind of hilarious. And also a little bit understandable. Have you ever sat in a folded chair for an extended amount of time? It's not cool. Okay. So we come up here. We don't need to know about the fish that tells the time. We'll see if we can breeze through these conversations. Do, 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 do. Alright, say nothing is what we did before. So move on. Keep staring. Say please. Have a seat. You go ahead, detective. Okay, might as well just go and seat. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. Right, like, so tell me, how can the head of the DeBarges Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Okay, so we got hurt. Hoping we don't need to do anything else. All right. The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Garte. 
Some people have no manners. It pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with the cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. He points at it again. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. 25 real. You know, I do need it. I need it for a bedroom. Um. Alright. Take the comical large check, but don't say anything. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? Or... No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's cool. Cool? Wouldn't go that far. I'm sure there are cooler things than delivering a comically oversized novelty check to a cafeteria manager. But, sure. If that's what's cool nowadays. You know what he kind of reminds me of? Is... I don't know, a character from, like, a Douglas Adams novel. He's like a mix of all the worst parts of both Zaphod Beeblebrox and Dirk Gently. And we're supposed to be Dirk Gently, so that's like that's saying something in and of itself. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. Okay, damage morale. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two wound words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. How do you know about my lost gun? I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. Well, he told us our name. I mean, that's at least better than most treatment we've gotten. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Composure is very challenging. We did take the novelty check which hurts us. The chair is killing us, but I don't think we are allowed a choice for that. Uh, Kim? Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Shit, we have to roll this? Well, unless we get super duper extremely lucky, we're basically fucked. Yeah, okay. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun. Those children are going to shoot themselves with it. Uh, make him cry too. It's alright. You know what? If you cry, well, right in front of him, it seems like a bad idea. We can try to stay cool. But we've lost the composure, so it's fucking a failure anyway. So we might as well just revel in that failure just for a brief moment. Cry. You want to cry? God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. I'll think you're disgusting. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this Mr. Dubois he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? He needs to cool the fuck down. Chill. Wow, we really took a morale hit, didn't we? Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! The large man snaps his fingers, but to no effect. You're in some kind of stupor. Okay, there are no Harrys. Let your mind go to the safe place. Well, Evart is distracted by your odd behavior. The lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, the desk, the papers on the walls. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hand somehow? Some kind of throwing motion? Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him? He's Mr. Dubois. Um. Actually, this chair is uncomfortable. I could use that glass of water. What an odd demonstration of... Huh? You got me, Harry. <laughs> I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. So, that's a no to the water then. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, there's your window. Get yourself together and ask some questions. Police officer questions. It's, it's about a time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Alright. Uh, could you help me get a dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostile cafeteria. Thank you, Kim. Oh my. He smiles pleasantly. 
Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with his murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Alright, let's just let Kim's words just work. I mean, he's a competent police officer. And what he says is exactly right. Doesn't he back up for me? I can certainly say how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He likes his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. He picks up the handset of the radio phone to his right, then clicks a the button. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, yeah, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race science. He hangs up and turns back to you. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He turns back to you. He's a big, impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. I hate you already? I mean, I hated you the moment we walked in, but... Alright. Um, I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. He nods. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you like I'm helping you with the body. I mean, it's no secret that lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing me so heavily. I understand. You need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Lieutenant says with a slow nod. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. Suddenly he slaps himself on the forehead. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. Uh, Kim, is that true? Are we door opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. He looks to the union boss. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now, I just need you to open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. Um, why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. He slams his fist together. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message to the police you're looking for you, or working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kusaragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. He turns back to you. So what will it be, Harry? All right, whose door is it? Oh, no one. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by a weasel? A loud, blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Here moves his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Puts his glasses back on. Yeah, I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, he sinks deeper into the chair. I'm what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Fuck, did we leave? No, I don't think we do this, right? Fuck him. Where do you know that these union guys are responsible? We probably even know who the guys are. I don't think we want to do this right now. Of course, Harry, I understand. But if that's the case, I don't think we'll ever find your gun. Even worse, one of them be able to speak like equals about the murder. Perhaps this is just bad timing for you. Know that you can always come back to me. I really hope you do. He winks at you. For the sake, for your sake, my sake, and your gun's sake, too. The tenant sighs. Yes, we both understand what you meant. This may be the only way, he thinks. I won't hold it against you. In fact, we probably should reconsider later. Okay, spirit decor, thank you for that. I hope we don't have to. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, he says almost gently. Honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia, man your age. Um, my body's going to break down any moment now. Probably push it to the limit. Rubbish, Harry, rubbish. I mean, look at you. He raises his hand towards you. For your age, you're obviously in the peak physical condition. A real silverback. Anyway, I assure you, I'm a well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. All right, I met Joyce talking about information. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. He's just a button on to sleep. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? 
We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez here. Smile widens. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends. And I'm helping you get that nasty body down from the tree. I'm not a jealous guy. That's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Um, alright. What happened with the previous negotiator, Mr. Gamont? What do you mean, Harry? The big man sounds annoyed. Nothing. I let him go. Um, he made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. He looks down and says, God knows how long he's got left. You called him a midget. Harry, he exclaims indignant. I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. Abruptly, he smiles and changes his tone. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. It's hard to say if he really lost his temple or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. I find it a little odd. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. I wouldn't be where I am right now if I wasn't nice. Sums his fist into his hand. Politics is all about emotions, and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. Okay, then. Positive emotions it is. You like positive emotions. Yeah, electrochemistry, that's not helpful right now. Alright. Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. The man frowns disapprovingly. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Alright. Joyce seemed to think the union's lowballing her. Yes, yes, lowballing, of course. He's suddenly very serious. This isn't a casino area. Real people, real livelihoods are all at stake here. But everything is a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear this is childish and irresponsible behavior. So why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she'll find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. Simple as that. Alright, let's talk about something else. Of course. Anything we prefer to get here, anything we discuss with Joyce, complete transparent organization. I have no interest in what she's doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this, he makes an all encompassing gesture, is secret. Tell her all about it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. He looks around. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost yacht, and tell her everything. Evar doesn't mind. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. Alright. Um, why'd you call me Mr. Dubois? You, of course, let's dispatch with you a format. You can call me Everett. I'll call you Harry. That's what the hang corpse called you. Harry. Is that really my name? My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesia cop, aren't you? He shrugged with an amazed expression. What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that, he looks at you, are very low. Um, my memory is a bit hazy. I assure you, there's nothing to be ashamed of, Harry. You're among friends, and the good news is... He taps the folder in front of him. I have a big, fat folder on you, Harry. I'm sure you have a lot of questions to ask. Maybe I can help you out. Don't trust him. For all you know, Dubois might be as his name. You need to confirm this. I'm sure you had some concerns you thought I might be able to address. He paused to look down at the brown folder on his desk. And you were probably right. I can. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Lieutenant expects the Vardover over spectacles. Mr. Kutsuragi, would you mind? His eyes never leave yours. Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. There's no way we're getting by with that. It's not happening. What's my full name? It's Harry. He glances at the folder. Harry Dubois. You feel like a Dubois, but you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. I feel like Dubois, but not quite a Harry. Something longer. Sure, okay, you're Harold. Harmon. Harl Demas. But that's not what that record says. The record says Harry Dubois. He taps on the folder. A real man's name. Lieutenant covers his face and sighs audibly. Mr. Kucharaki doesn't even seem slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. He frowns at him. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. Uh, do you know anything about my family? Do I have a wife or kids or family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? You're right. I don't. That's why I like you, Harry. His fat finger is pointing at you. Good man knows both his strengths and weaknesses, and you, my friend, you are one of the all-time greats. What kind of cop does it say I am? Well, Harry. He opens a folder and leaves through his docu its contents. It looks like you used to like to party hard, and you like disco music. I guess you're a disco cop. I'm planning on changing a lot of things about myself. 
I'm going to stand 100% behind you through all those changes, Harry. He reaches his arms out. You need to understand that all I want to do is help you. Where'd you get that folder? Ah, this? He closes the folder. My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Gutsuragi. I'm sure, I'm sure you understand. He turns back to you. Please continue, Harry. Um, I'd really like to look at that folder. Yeah, Kim suspects something. It's still freaking low, and we don't have another chance of this. But fuck it, let's do it. Holy fuck, we actually did it. As you look at the folder, Everrock covers it with his hands and pets it. Is he trying to hide that it's not a real RCM folder? It certainly doesn't have the RCM stamp on it. That's not an RCM folder. Okay, Harry, you got me, he says, grinning. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He's got the name for the Census Bureau and everything from else from your action here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Gutierrez, from the Census Bureau, like I said. He looks annoyed. Now, I'm actually a very busy man, so is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? A pity. The mystery of you ought to remain a mystery for some time being. So the Census Bureau says my name is Harry Dubois? Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Well, we'll move on next time. Interesting. Well, he's found out our name. It's progress of his org. Thank you for watching. This has been Disco Elysium. I'm PC University, PC University, and I'll see you guys next time.